This is the Museum of Contemporary Art. I um, could have seen this a couple times, having been in the area. It's um, down in South Chengdu. I, uh, I even pointed it out when we passed by it. Uh, it was Friday, what's today, Tuesday? And I asked uh, my friend what that was and she didn't know. I, I really hate sometimes how stupid locals can be. Here's the museum. Here's my friend's house. Here's the museum. Uh, Polar Ocean World was what we had gone to see. And I asked her to look it up online and make sure that, you know, everything was going to be open. And we get there and it's closed that day, of course. Like the one day a year they close on a Friday. And then uh, we pass by this in the car and I'm like, ooh, what's that? Is that a museum? Can we stop there? And she's like, I don't know. It's like, really? So anyway. And then uh, Saturday morning I went to o Polar Ocean World. I went, went right by this uh, I didn't know it was here until I did a thorough search to see if there's any museums I missed in town. Earlier today, I tried to go to uh, the China Auto Racing Museum. It's just a bunch of derelict. Uh, I took line two. I thought it was recording, but it didn't record. From Chunchi Road. And then bus 133 runs this route. Then I came down on bus uh, 118. Um, I'm going to try to go to this Sichuan Sandu Museum later. I uh, don't know what their exhibit is. I'm a little miffed too. Like my friend uh, from Lijiang I'm supposed to go visit is like, oh, you can't stay with me because I have family coming tomorrow. I'm like, what the hell? Like, I've been in Chengdu a week telling you, you know. I'm gonna come down and you invited me to stay with you. You could have mentioned that before I flew around the world, like that there was like an expiration date in the very near future. I mean, I know it's Chinese New Year, which is why I kept asking her, you wanna make plans, but every kind of plan I made shot down as that would be too crowded or whatever. And I'm like, well, yeah, I don't wanna, I wanna avoid crowds, but I mean, let's see, where's the entrance? Yeah, it's complicated. I mean, in the winter time, doing all this stuff has an extra level of kind of situational bureaucracy. Hello, museum, free. Cabaron sold a paper. <laughs> China Art Museum, Shanghai. He's been collected by two non-exhibited series. Africa, Blue House, Mysteries of Columbus. African Art Collection. Art installation in Central Park. Mm -mm -mm. Yeah, and then my friend gets all mad at me. She's like, you're being selfish. And I'm like, I'm being selfish. I freaking flew around the world. And then like, her family's gonna be there, and so she's like, well, you can just get a hostel. And I'm like, you know, you're telling me it's the niece that's gonna be there that tried to kill herself when I was in California, like, and she was like a total bitch to me, like, the night before, and I said, I think your niece is like a spoiled brat. And she's like, no, she's actually not, and all this stuff. And then like the next day, her niece tries to kill herself, and, um, and then so that like puts this huge thing on our hanging out, because it's like, well, she, I have to drive her every day to the, uh, loony bin to visit, you know, because I had to commit her, you know, niece. So I'm like, yeah, I mean, I'd rather not have to deal with something like that again, you know, and like not 
you know, and, and be in your country and like kind of be there specifically to be with you. And like, you know, at least when it happened in California, it was like, well, in my own country, it's not some like totally weird thing where I feel like super weird now. That guy's got a dong. But I think that's kind of the thing with a lot of Chinese, like, uh, they're, like, single, they don't have, like, a lot of siblings, maybe, so they don't get it sometimes, and then they're, if, like, any little thing that you, like, they're, like, you're selfish, it's, like, mm, not really, I mean, I flew around the world here, and didn't put a lot of pressure on you and said, well, I'll fly to Chengdu and you let me know when, you know, you're ready. You know, I'll spend a few days a week in Chengdu hanging out and I don't want to, like, fly right to your house and be, like, all demanding, like, spend time with me, let's hang out, let's do this, let's go on a road trip, you know. So, I don't know. And I figured, you know, I'm like, well, are you still working? She's like, yeah, I have work until maybe, like, the end of next week. So I was like, all right, well, I'll try to arrive, like, midweek, maybe, like, you know, and then you have, like, a few more days, wrap up work for the holidays, and we can hang out. She did mention, she's like, well, my family might come, so it might be, like, a little tricky. And I'm like, all right, well, I guess we can work around that. I mean, it's, I didn't know they were going to be, like, staying with her, and that she would be like, oh, no, I can't, uh, they're getting in the same day you're going to come. It's like, well, thanks for telling me after I booked the flight. I told you I was going to book the flight for today, you know, like, what the hell? But I'm, I'm apparently selfish. Oh my god, it's like so much drama. This is why I don't like trying to plan things with people. People are like, oh, you like traveling by yourself. I'm like, not specifically. I don't like drama. I don't like stupid BS about trying to make... Like last night, I was supposed to hang out with someone. And um, she wanted to go to a place that I had been like three times. Four times, probably. And I'm like, well... It's just a bunch of shops on a street. You can go see that by yourself. I don't really see why you need to me to be with you to go do that. Like, you already, I was willing to meet her there, and then she changed plans on me. Because um, she had work. So I'm like, all right, well, I guess I'll meet you there still. And then uh, I messaged, and she's like, oh, well, I'm feeling really tired. I don't know. Actually, she didn't get back to me until, like, hours later after we're supposed to meet. It's like, well, I'm feeling super tired. So I just laid down on my bed and I, it was cold. I didn't feel like going out. I'm like, yeah, that's understandable. You could have messaged me. And, you know, I figured that was probably the case. And then, like, she said, well, you didn't get back to me because I messaged you, like, and I'm like, you told me we're meeting at 6.30. I messaged you at 6 and told you I was on my way. She's like, yeah, but I messaged you at 5 and said I had to drop my bag off and I was coming. And I'm like, all right, well. So I got back to you an hour later, half hour before we're going to meet. What's the problem? You're obviously at home. You're just basically lazy. But I find that's the case with most people. Like, their idea is that you're going to hang out with them. And it's like, I don't know if they pick up on the subtext of the way I live my life. And it's like, kind of comes across as I don't think they're a terribly interesting person so they feel a little miffed about that like I, I wouldn't make the trip just to see them it has to be like but that's the thing it's like I, I'm, I'm more than willing to meet people and make friends but if you would want to meet me like when I was going around the United States in my camper van and I was going to meet people it was a little bit easier and be like alright send me your address GPS will drive over say hi have a cup of tea whatever couch surf maybe I stay there maybe I don't doesn't matter I just drive to the gym afterwards work out shower whatever here it's a little more complicated I'm paying $30 a night for a, ho for a hostel so I don't want to like totally be on somebody else's schedule I'm not as flexible